Hello and welcome to Channel's Book Club. I am Olakunle Kasumo. For many years, Port Harcourt based Rainbow Book Club has been advocating for an improved reading culture in Nigeria. And part of that effort has been the organization of Book of the Month events. The club's author for the month of February 2017 just happens to be the author of the book titled They Call Me Mama. She is Her Excellency Mrs. Dolakwa Shimbajo, the wife of Nigeria's Vice President. Professor Yemi Oshimbajo. Back then, Mrs. Oshimbajo was a lawyer, mother, and wife of the then Attorney General of Lagos State who simply wanted to help the helpless. Little did she know that some years down the line, she will be thrust into a more national platform as Nigeria's second lady. Together with Coco Kalango, founder of Rainbow Book Club, and Her Excellency Mrs. Dola Oshimbajo, we review the Call Me Mama a 175-page coffee table diary of intriguing street experiences. Enjoy it. Your Excellency, thank you for hosting us. And um, well done. They call me Mama. I thoroughly enjoyed reading it. Um, I, I think the, the first impression I had was um, it brought to my attention the fact that there are so many needy young people in Nigeria and we just drive past them every single day, so many of us. You know, and I was impressed by um, the story, the, the, the entire idea of paying attention to young people in our society who have various needs and so on. But I'm going to allow you to talk a lot about that as we go on. But l let's start generally. Um, what was your experience like putting this together and what inspired you to put it together? It um, was an experience of many years and I just felt such a compulsion over a period of two weeks or so and I almost couldn't sleep, couldn't eat. I just kept writing and everything was written at that time. So, so uh, it, it was more of a burden in, in your heart? A burden to put it into writing. But the writing I did in 2003, and the book wasn't printed till about 10 years later. Okay, but I mean, for there are so many people out there who might not have an idea of what's in let's, let's do a general um, overview. But let, I'm going to ask Mrs. Kalango to do that. Uh, a general overview of what the Call Me Mama is all about. And then I've got a question for you along that line. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Um, they Call Me Mama, I believe, is um, entries in the author's diary um, from a work she had been doing with area boys, as we call them in Lagos. Area boys are boys who live on the street, who would normally be in gangs, um, outcasts, misfits, that, as you said, we drive past um, all the time in the traffic and um, street children begging who have the potential to become members of gangs and perpetrate all sorts of um, antisocial behavior in society. So um, Her Excellency was working, or the author then, was working <laughs> <laughs> with them. It's a faith-based work, because I believe you were a pastor at the time, and taking time to go under the bridge. Um, where they carried out most of this work is called Under. Um, in the book and so she chronicles her relationship with these boys the ups and downs that's what the story is about about so yeah. so uh, I mean tell us a bit about that so, so for many years you were seeing these boys yes. under the bridge yes I visited them at least once a week sometimes during the week as well I saw them almost every day because they were on my route to dropping off my children in school. And at some point, I started dropping off tea every morning, and they had to catch my car to put the tea and back in the car every afternoon after school hours so that they would get tea the following day. So my experience with them was basically seeing them once a week, but then I had them in my life for many years. So it depended on what their needs were. There were times some were in prison, there were times some were arrested. So it just depended on what their needs were. But what, what is, 
I mean, what led you to do that? Were you just driving one day and you saw them mm -hmm. and then you decided, let me start talking to these boys? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of us do that every day. We drive past these boys every day. For you, what made you stop? For me, it was more of an inspirational burden. And as she said, it's um, as a result of my faith. And we had um, like outreaches in our church. And once we happened upon them, I just knew that I had to stay with them, that I wasn't going to just give them a meal, maybe at Christmas or just a one shot. I knew I had to spend quality time if I wanted to make a difference. And I really did feel compelled, like I you was compelled to. How many years? How long? How many years? Probably about, about 10 years, or a little more, more than 10 years. Okay. Uh, mm. it, From it, then it, on, yes. your book was published in 2000, uh, 2014. Yes. So we are talking about 18 years ago. Yes. Yeah. Okay, now I have to ask you this. <laughs> uh, of course, you never thought your husband would become vice president. No, no, no. Then he was attorney general, yes. correct? Yes, I was under the bridge when my husband was attorney general. Yes. Did those boys know, they know then that you were the wife of the Attorney General of Lagos State? No. No. They just knew I was Mama. And and that's all they knew. You didn't tell, you didn't hint? Nothing. It wasn't important. Wow. Did they ever <laughs> find out? I'm curious to know. Did they ever find out? Yes, they did find out. And that was a very incredible day. There was um, something done in my husband's honor after he left the Lagos State government, after he stopped being Attorney General there. A book, I believe, was published, Essays in His Honor, and they must have seen a newspaper that had pictures of the function and had a lot of notable lawyers, and that is when they realized who I was. So I arrived under the bridge, and they all were huddled way back. They didn't come forth as usual. They were, they were acting very strange, and they all huddled over the newspaper. So of course, I insisted that what's going on, and they brought it to me. So I had to literally come out of the closet and say that that's who I am. So they were very wary. And I said, ah, but it's still me now. It's still Mama. I like to. <laughs> and so I'm it actually was difficult for them. I'm curious to know mm -hmm. how the relationship was after that. Did things go back to normal? Yes, they did, eventually. It was just a few, a few weeks of of uncertainty, especially among the ones that are more retiring. Mm. Mm. What, what was it like? Um, you, will, you will park your car, get yes. down, yes. Most walk, times, walk under the bridge? Most times I didn't drive, except during the week. Then I would. Uh, my car was the safest car in Lagos. You couldn't steal it. <laughs> You couldn't steal that card. They would, they would probably drag you down, and your life wouldn't be worth living. Uh, most times, I would go with um, a couple of people from church, so someone else would drive, and would get down. Would always take tea, so they'd gather around and have their tea first, and then once they're done with their tea, we would have a chat with them, encourage them, and then of course questions and who's been naughty during the week and who's missing and who needs more counsel. And that went, went on for 10 years. Yes, we had a lot mm. of them go back home uh, and a lot of them go into trades, one trade or the other. Uh, that was a faster way to get them to stay at home than just saying go back home. Because for a lot of them, the reasons they left home were still waiting. Mm. So if they did go back home, the same things that kicked them out Mm. We do the same thing again. So we had a lot of um, disappointments. But mm. eventually, getting into a trade seemed the faster route. So we lean towards that. Mm. There, are, there are millions yes. of young people like that mm. all over Nigeria. Mm. Um, how, do you, how do you feel about that? Uh, particularly now mm. that you you um, you are in a place where you, you have the privilege of seeing more. You, know, you can see the bigger picture. 
mm. you know, of Nigeria. And you can see millions of young people mm. like that. So what are your thoughts? Well, I have mixed thoughts uh, because I know what they need and what they need is love because all I took under the bridge was love. All I really had to give was love. The food, a lot of people would have taken food, could have taken food. But what really made the difference to them was the love. And it's very difficult for me when I see people that I cannot reach out to them because of where I am now. So I do have mixed feelings. There are some of them I wish I could go looking for now. But it's just harder, it's just difficult. How can I go to their haunts now with the, with all of the with cloud the of protocols mm, around you? Yes, so that's very difficult. I wish I wish I could. <laughs> 